My name is Amy, and I am the dyer behind Pancake and Lulu Yarn and Fiber. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is my podcast, and I talk about my projects. I talk about a lot of different things, things that I just started, things that I'm working on, things that I finished, um, kind of just life stuff, and uh, a few things about my business as well. So, so welcome. Thank you for coming. I've had, just to let you know, started this podcast episode several times, so I keep forgetting what I've talked about, but I think I just got most of the important stuff out of the way. So I'm just going to dive into the kind of things that I plan to talk about today. Um, I started a new project called Stephenville Crossing by Jennifer Beale. And I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to show that to you. I've got some progress on, um, I've got some works in progress. I think I only brought one work in progress to share. No, a couple. Yeah, one, no, two. One I thought I was done with, but I'm not. So anyway, that, that's kind of my projects. Um, show you a couple of life things, um, so, something I bought and yeah, got some new shoes. Um, yeah, so grab yourself something to drink and sit down with your project and join me for a little bit. So I just listed, let me just take a sip, my blackberry lemonade. It's very good. I really like sparkling water with flavors. So I try a lot of different kinds. Um, it's kind of my go-to drink. It's sort of festive, you know, but it's healthy. So anyway, let me just get into what I am doing today. Today, I already listed my pre-order for my full moon of the month yarn colorway. And I will put a picture of it up on the screen. It's the April full moon of the month and it's called April Awakening Moon. Yeah. Um, every month I list a surprise colorway that is based on the name of that month's full moon. So I usually list it a few days before the end of the month and then into the next month, the month that it is the moon for. This is my third year of doing the full moon yarns. And the first year I did the most common names kind of, but then I discovered there are many alternative names depending on what culture, all different cultures have different names for the full moon of the month. So I kind of have been having fun the last two years choosing different names, whichever one kind of appeals to me. And then I use that idea of that name as a springboard to design a, to design a mood board. Springboard to de design a mood board. Yes, that's what I do. And I then choose kind of pictures and images that are um, inspired by the name and the colorway kind of just comes to me as I'm doing the mood board and then I design the yarn to go with that mood board. So I do have a um, period, a pre-order period where people order or there's also a recurring charge that you can sign up for and just have it done every month for as long as you want. You can cancel anytime. It's very easy. I also should say that I can, I do dye this on all my different bases, including mini skeins and fiber. So a lot of people, it's a pretty popular kind of club, I would say, that I have of people. Um, many people, probably most people, actually do the recurring order, but you definitely don't have to. And um, m some people just do the mini skein every month to get um, um, one mini skein a month of the moon wet colorway. I made myself the first year a moon, I don't have it here, but I, I, I have it actually in, we have a summer house up in the Adirondacks and I kept, I took it up there last year and I kind of thought it would be nice to leave it up there. It's a blanket. Um, it's a big circular blanket that I did the first year um, with all the moon colorways for that year, uh, which was really fun to do because every month I kind of is a bulky weight. Uh, blanket so it didn't take me that long each month to just knit up that month's color um, I'm not I think some other people have done blankets I don't know what some of the other people have done who who get the moon colorways I, I would be really curious to know so if you are someone who has uh, been collecting them or use them please comment below because I'd love to know what what you make and um, what you've made with those colorways so I thought I would show you the, the moon colorways this year so far. 
the first one I did was, and these are not available anymore. Just, just This is just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, this is the January Quiet Moon. You have to get this when it's available um, at each month. So right now we have the April one up. This is the January one though. It was really a pretty colorway and it was called the Quiet Moon. I really liked the greens in this with the purples. It's just kind of a touch of emerald with the, with the purples. That was called the Quiet Moon. And the second one of the year was the February Ice Moon, which are these beautiful blues and purples again. These are ones I kept for myself to make a project. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make yet with them. And the third one this year has been the March Sap Moon, which has kind of some browns in it. This was based off of the idea of the maple syrup, tapping the maple trees. So these are the three this year so far i'll show them to you together well sorry and they all kind of go nicely together most of the moons have grays in them as well grays or or blacks in them as well as the kind of colors that i choose for the mood board anyway i thought i'd share those with you i'm not sure what i'm going to do with these it actually I have the whole years of last year's full moons as well in a bulky weight that I haven't decided what to do with. Like I said, I did the, the blanket the first year. I think I might do a weaving because I've been really into weaving. So at least with the bulky yarns and with these, I'm just not sure yet. So I think I might wait till I collect um, all 12 before I decide what I'm gonna do. But I thought I would share that with you first up. Um, and what else have I been doing? I'll put a picture up of this new design called Stephenville Crossing. And this is a new pattern that just came out last week by Jennifer Beal. And I've never made any of her patterns before. I saw this picture on Instagram. I think it was the day it was released. And I've never, I, I've heard of her, but I haven't really, I didn't really, wasn't familiar with her designs at all. When I saw this though, I thought to myself, this is totally something I would wear and I haven't made myself a sweater that most of my sweaters are more like statement kind of pieces um I do I have done a lot of in the last year I'd say I've done a lot of knit collage sweaters I have several sweaters I've made that are more wear like everyday wearing sweaters in fact the one I'm wearing right now is the um comfort fade cardi which is probably my most worn sweater and I, there's a much better picture on um Ravelry but I'll sh I'll stand up to show you this is I dyed this yarn it's kind of th this was a one of a kind I wasn't crazy about this didn't fade as well as I would have liked actually but it faded well um on the upper part I think it was kind of a blackberry variations um but I like I said I designed four skeins and I just did it for myself so I didn't actually sell this yarn this the this is my DK ply DK weight um, which I love and I wear this sweater a lot it fits really well um, it was knit several years ago now I think I say like five years ago maybe more anyway I'll put a, put a link to my Ravelry page in case you want to see a better picture of it um, but it was a it was a great knit. It did take me a while. I think I put it aside actually. And oh, I think I know what happened is when I was trying to attach this collar, I did it wrong and I got super frustrated, so I put it aside cuz I knew I was going to have to rip it out and it was it's still this collar is a very large piece actually. It's almost like its own shawl. Um and I got very frustrated. I put it aside and then I thankfully did pick it up and after I kind of calmed down after several months I picked it up again took out took off the collar part that I had done and did it finished it and I'm very happy I did because it is a very very useful sweater and I think it's really pretty and it fits well so anyway back to my new project I saw the Jennifer Beale design Stephenville Crossing on Instagram and the colorway that it was in the way that she was modeling it, I just thought that is a sweater I will wear a lot. Um, so I 
very impulsively went and purchased the pattern. She was having a discount, so I always like that. So I purchased the pattern, and then when I was reading about the pattern, um, sorry for the reflection of the window. I actually have the ring light off because I want. I like wearing my glasses, um, and it shines right in my glasses, but now I can see the window is shining in my glasses. Anyway, it's better than a ring light, though. So I went to buy the pattern and I bought it and I was looking at what yarn she used because I did like the colorway and I was probably thinking I would I usually think about doing my own yarn for a pattern um when I buy a new pattern I'd like to usually like to use my own yarn but I saw the yarn that she used and I knew I could dye a color like that but the yarn that she used was called Rewa Fibers in this base called Haven. I don't know if that's showing up. Looks like it's not focused. It's called Haven and it is 100% yak down. I don't have a base that is yak. Uh, the only base that I know of that I do, I have dyed before is, I think it's like 20% yak. The rest is merino. So I don't, I can't even get like 100% yak down. So I thought that would be really fun to try and it is so, so soft. It is so lovely. And I do love this colorway, the way that it's got these tiny, it's a very neutral color. From far away, it looks very, just like a great neutral color that you would be able to wear with everything. Uh, the colorway is called Sweet Memory and it's a fingering weight. Uh, so this company, Rewa, I've never bought their yarn before. They're from Minnesota. And this is, the yarn is from Tibet. It's spun in China from Tibet. And so I started this project and I have to say this is a really interesting project so far. I mean, I really just cast on but the, the construction of it so far, I, it, if there weren't test knitters who had published pictures of their progress on Ravelry, I would be very confused because I would think, would have thought that I was like, it's just such an odd construction. Really interesting. And thankfully some test knitters did put their pictures up as they were going so I can look at them and I can see that I'm on the right track. So the first thing you do for this is you saw the picture of what the final sweater looks like. So it's a lacy sweater. Um, the first part you do are you just do these two little squares. So you do two like this and you put it on waist yarn. The live stitches are right here. And then, this is just so far, I, you, so that's the first square right here. You just do two of those. These are the shoulder pieces that go right here. Then you pick up stitches along one side of, this is on the waist yarn still, um, on this edge. Then you pick up stitches along one end and you start knitting in this direction down. So this piece, as far as I can tell, it's either, it's like this. It, this, this piece goes across your shoulder and this piece comes down. I think the front and the back are the same, at least for a little while, and then it changes. Um, one is like a scoop neck. Well, I think the design is different on each side, but we'll see. I'm not actually sure. I didn't read. You know, when I read through a pattern, it says always like read through the pattern before you start, and I kind of do that, but I get really lost reading through a pattern unless I'm going knitting along with it too. Um, you can kind of read through it to some extent, skim and see, okay, I kind of understand, but I don't really, a lot of times with a complex pattern, and this is a complex pattern, you don't really know what, what it is until you, or at least I don't, until I like am actually doing it and then it makes sense. So thankfully they had, the test centers have put pictures up because I would have liked to have a few more photos of the sort of process in the pattern. It does seem like an amazingly interesting pattern to make. I mean, I love the way the final project, uh, the product looks. So I'm very excited. Anyway, that's my progress so far. It's very tiny. 
and then I did this other price, which I think I do the same thing. I put, I don't know, I think I join these at some point, but we'll see. That is my Stephenville Crossing. I do not have a strict deadline for this project. I mean, like I said, it was very spontaneous. I think I was thinking maybe this could be my Rhinebeck sweater. So I put that down um, in Ravelry as my deadline to have, have it finished by October 1st. So we'll see. That is, and I am making another, I, I haven't shared my other sweater that I'm making. Um, I will share, I haven't been working because I haven't been working on it. I just kind of did the cast on, but I will share that probably next time. And I'll share progress with this as I come along. It is really fun. I worked on it for a little while yesterday, just trying to figure out, um, there are many charts. There are, it, like I said, just really interesting construction. So that's my new exciting cast on. I'm so excited about the new yak yarn. It was real. it's really soft and really beautiful to work with. So that's fun. So next up, I can show you what I've been working on as well. I have completed the body and the head and the little cap and the antennae of my, I forget how far I showed this. Did I show this last time? I showed you the firefly. This is the golden daydream moth. It is by um, Lali Lala. This is the bag that you can get. When you get the kit, it comes with this wonderful bag that makes it, it's really good for giving as a gift. So this is a gift for my niece. The firefly that I showed last time is for my nephew. I have twin um, niece and nephew. Then I, and their birthday's coming up in April. So I'm, I'm right on track though. I'm gonna definitely finish these in time. I've had these kits for a year and a half. So I intended to give this to them a long time ago. <laughs> Finally, I'm good enough at crochet where I can actually do this project. I was not good enough when I first bought these kits, but um, I've also done part of the wings. Here are the two wings, they're not attached yet. They get um, a border. They get like another color around the edge of the wings. There are actually two parts then you'd crochet, you crochet around the edge attaching them so they become very substantial, each wing. And then there are two little wings down below as well. And I think I had put a picture before of, I can put a picture up if um, I remember, of what the final one looks like. But I, I'll show you this very soon. This will be finished. I'm very excited and I'm gonna show, um, her brother is the firefly. So they're twins as well, sort of. Um, so that is, I've made a lot of progress on that this week. That's been exciting. What else have I done? I've done my square for this month for the Knit Collage Creative Knitters Square uh, Pattern. What is it called? Knit Stitch of the Month. Um, we're making a blanket in Creative Knitters Club. Sorry, I keep turning that the wrong way. Um, so this is the quatrefoil, I think it's called. Yeah, because they're four, it's a little lace, like four little lace holes done five times on this square. And I have the other two squares. Um, I think I showed last time. I'm just gonna do a square a month in a different uh, spun cloud. This is spun cloud by Knit Collage. And I have, um, I'm actually not sure what color I'm going to do next. I'm going to try to keep it kind of neutrals and bluish shades. And it's going to be a big patchwork blanket when it's done or throw. Um, yeah, so I did that one for this month. That was the March one for Creative Knitters Club. And what else have I done? Oh, let me show you. Let me just look at my... I've work, been working my Granny Square pillow that I showed last time, but I didn't bring that up Um Hopefully by the next time I podcast, that will be done so I can show you the pillow. What else have I done? Okay, this is the thing that I thought I was finished with. Then I discovered four more skeins of yarn. 
So this is a project that I was calling the theater throw. And I was really excited because I actually didn't know how, when I started it, I looked on Ravelry and I started it in 2014. So this is a really old project that I had set aside and kind of picked up here and there over the years, it was in one of my project bags and I you know, forgot about it a lot of the time. But then I decided recently I would just work on it while I was watching movies. The reason it's called the theater throw is I used to take it when it was smaller, I would take it to the movies and work on it because it's just um, a very easy garter stitch. And I was taking uh, each skein, this is by Noro, the yarn I mean, and I was just taking it, making a square of garter stitch and then rotating it when I was adding a new skein. I think I did several, I did a couple skeins. There's a big rectangle in the middle. But then I was kind of making, it's almost like a log cabin blanket. Anyway, it's a little bit hard to show it here, but you can see it a little bit. I thought this was done. It's actually the perfect size for one person, like just for your lap. And then I was in my craft room and looking for some other yarn for something. And I found, I thought I had the yarn in the bag with this. Then I found four more skeins of the yarn. The Noro yarn. So then I remembered that back, this was 2014, I used to get occasionally, I was really into Noro yarn and there was a website, they may still be around, I'm not sure if they are called Little Knits, I think. And she sold at a discount bags of Noro yarn, where which were 10 skein bags, like a full bag. And I think because it was a good deal, I bought four, I mean, I bought a 10, 10 skeins of this in a bag. And I did not realize that I had stashed the other four um, skeins in my stash, kind of hidden, hidden them away. And so now I have four more skeins of this. I wound one up. I was actually not, I was thinking oh, this blanket is a nice size for one person. And I was thinking, okay, that's it. I, that's fine. Like, I'll just do something else with this. But then I was talking to my husband. Actually, we were sitting on the sofa and my daughter was actually, my daughter's home from college this week for spring break. And she had it on her lap and my husband kind of wanted it too. And then I said, oh, actually found, just found a bunch more yarn for that. Should I use it to make this blanket bigger or should I make something else? And they were both like, you definitely should make this blanket bigger. So I guess it's not going to be a one person blanket. So, and it kind of makes sense because I don't know if I really want anything else with the same yarn. So here I am back, back to this again. So I'm going to just, it's very easy. I just pick up stitches along another edge. That's what I've been doing all along anyway. And I guess this is not finished. So I had, I had marked it finished on Ravelry. I'm kind of disappointed that I have to keep working on that, but it is a good, I mean, it's a beautiful warm yarn and it does make a nice blanket. So that's gonna be still in progress, I guess. Okay, next up, what's next on my list of, well, last week I published a video that was just a quiet spinning session that I thought, I don't know, I just sort of thought it might be just fun to just videotape myself spinning without talking and just uh, have the sounds of the spinning wheel and some gentle music in case. I just didn't know if that was something that people might wanna, I don't know, spin to or whatever. It seems like it's, I haven't gotten any thumbs down. <laughs> um, so we'll see, I might do another one like that. It's, they're very much easier to publish. And if people do like them, just to listen, have sort of something soothing on in the background while they do other things is my idea um, for the quiet videos. Um, but I did spin this beautiful yarn from a beautiful bat by Wild Time Art. Um, Wild Time makes gorgeous hand spun yarn and bats. This is a total uh, like freestyle, what do you call it? A coarse bun yarn. I'm gonna use this for weaving. I actually thought I would videotape myself weaving it maybe with a quiet video. Um, this kind of yarn is super fun to weave with. That's why I like, actually that's really my favorite way to use these art, these artistic kind of um, hand spun yarns. 
because I just really think it brings out the best in the yarn. When you knit with them, they kind of lose, you kind of hide some of the beauty of it. And the reason why I core spin these is, is also because I think it really is the best way to show off the beautiful bat because you really get to see all the different colors that way. Nothing gets kind of covered up or hidden. Um, so let's stay tuned for that. Anyway, I was excited because I hadn't spun anything for a while and I've been really itching to. And it's so much fun to spin. I love spinning. I've been spinning for so many years now over the years, but I stopped. I do it on and off. Sorry, that was my heater. Um, I do it on and off. Um, I've been doing it more in the last few years. I got a new spinning wheel uh, maybe a year ago. And so I've really been enjoying, I've been enjoying using that. And I actually have a few spinning wheels. I'll do more about spinning if there's an interest in that. Let me know below if you're interested in hearing that about that. Um, I actually started off my business just as, as hand spun yarn. So it's a very old, uh, comfortable, fun thing, relaxing um, thing that I love to do. And I'm really glad I've gotten back into it again. And I'm glad I have a, a loom now because that's really how I like to use this, this kind of yarn. All right, so what else do I have here? Sorry, let me just look. I got that. Oh, I didn't show my bag. This is the bag that I had. It's by Cottontail Farms, I think it's called. Cottontail Farm. It's so cute. I got this last, no, actually maybe a couple years ago. I love it. It's got this uh, wonderful, it's a very nice size because it has this whole inner part that kind of comes up if you what always happens to me is I start out obviously with smaller if you're making a big project you don't want to carry around all of your yarn usually so I usually start off with just a couple but then the project gets bigger and bigger so this bag actually kind of grows with you because you can cinch it like that and it really expands anyway I just really love the cute pattern of the woods on this bag Okay, and then, oh, here's something I got this week that I was really excited. Um, I saw this on sale at Anthropology. I ordered a couple of things. Um, my sister works at Anthropology, so I get like a family and friends, a family and friends discount, I guess you call it. Um, and this, these washi tapes were so cute. They were on sale already, and then I got like 40% off, so they were very inexpensive but I thought they were so cute. And I love this granny square one. These two also were in the pack as well. They're really fun, but I really got it because of the granny squares. I also really like this one is like cross stitch, which you can see. The others are just pretty floral colors. I like how they all go together. But that was super fun. I don't know if they still have it because they were on sale, like I said. And then it was like friends and family appreciation. Actually, I think that ends this weekend. I better check it out. It's really dangerous that she works there because it's my favorite store pretty much. Just love, um, and it's expensive. So I don't like to buy things there unless they're on sale. So now that she has this discount that she it's like a card that you she can get for just her immediate family include and it includes like siblings so it's really dangerous anyway the last thing i think this was the last thing let me just double check my notes sorry oh my pad just went out um Oh, okay. So the last thing I was, well, one of the last things I just wanted to share that I got this week, I have a code, um, Tom's Shoes. I saw these shoes on Instagram. They targeted me and they got me. I think these are really awesome. These are Tom's. It's classic looking on the top, but check out this platform. They are so, so comfortable and so, so cute. So I was targeted on Instagram with an ad for these. And I was just like, oh my God, how do they know? It's just so evil. Then when I was there, I actually had a coupon or maybe I just searched for a coupon for Tom's. I somehow got a coupon. Maybe it was I signed up for 
their emails or something like that. So these were a little bit of a discount. Um, I got those. I got three pairs of shoes from Tom's. <laughs> so bad. The one pair, actually one pair is like kind of a sneaker that, um, like a slip on sneaker that I don't have up here, but they're really, really cute. They were on sale. Then I also got these, which I also love the plat, like slight platform on these. These are also the classic Toms. I haven't actually had Toms for so long. I used to really like them. And then I haven't, I haven't gone with them, but I just thought these would be really fun for summer. And so I got those. Those are more like everyday ones. To me, these are dressy, dressier ones. Probably not gonna wear these, like, I wouldn't wear these like as everyday, plus they're white. So this is like to wear with some pretty like flowy pants or probably flowy pants is what I'm gonna wear those with. I'm super excited. Um, anyway, when I got those, they gave me this coupon code or it's like one of those like referral codes that I will put down below in case you want, anyone wants to get a discount on Tom's. I'm, it says, it's like you share it with your friend and then you get a discount as well on your next pair. I'm not going to be buying any more Tom's for a while because I just got three pairs of Tom's, but I put the code down below in case anybody else wants to get a discount. It's on this code, um, in the show notes. So those were a really fun splurge. And I'm super excited because I'm going to Disney World uh, the beginning of April. So I'm gonna wear, and it's gonna be like really warm. So I'm gonna bring these for going out to dinner. Yeah, I'm excited because I haven't been to Disney World for since pre-pandemic times. My family, my mom loves Disney World. So I've been many times over the years and um, it's a really, it's a fun experience. But I, my kids are now in college. My daughter, Chloe, just started her first year this year. She goes to Hamilton College in upstate New York. Uh, that is kind of near, it's on the edge of the Adirondacks and near Utica. And it's a beautiful, beautiful area, beautiful campus. Uh, she's really happy there, but it's like, now she's in college my son is going to be, um, well, he's a junior this year at Brown. So they're both a little too old for Disney World. I know my daughter would go. Um, she's too busy though because of school. Uh, so sadly, I don't have little kids anymore to take, to go experience Disney World with, but I was, I jumped on the opportunity to go with my sister and her twins who are about to turn eight, the same ones that I'm making the um, moth and firefly for. So they're about to turn eight. Like I said, their birthday, um, maybe I didn't say, their birthday's in um, April. Right before their birthday, we're going to Disney World for four, I think we have five nights. Four, four nights, maybe five days. It's, it's kind of a quick trip, but they are going with my mom and my stepfather and they were talking about it a couple months ago and i and my mom was like do you want to go and i was like sure i'll go and it's so much fun to experience disney world through the eyes of you know almost eight-year-olds for the first time so i was like yes i've got i won't i don't want to miss their reaction to everything at disney world i think that would be awesome so i'll um i'll probably put up Instagram pictures about that, talk about it in another episode after I go, but I'm very excited to go and experience Disney World through those eyes. In terms of books and shows that I've been watching, I listen to audiobooks when I'm working. So in terms of audiobooks that I've listened to recently, I thought I would just put out a couple su suggestions um, because I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I think this month I'm on my third yeah, I've listened to three or four um, just this month. So I do go through a lot while I'm working. I like to listen to them. The first one that I would suggest, um, actually I just finished called Cassandra Speaks by Elizabeth Lesser. And it's actually about a topic that I've always wondered about. So I thought this was just, it spoke to me right away. Um, it's called When Women, or the sort of subtitle is when women are the storytellers the human story changes and it's such a great book it's a really fascinating um it's a good audiobook 
the reader's really good. And it's just kind of examining the idea of how our history of the world is really told to us through the words and stories of mostly men. So it's very interesting to think about how things might change um, if women were those storytellers. And it's just a great book. And I and it, like I said, it's something I've I've often thought about on my own. Like, and this book does a great job of really examining what how things would be different. And so I, I recommend that one highly. That was um, I, I get my books on Audible. And then the other book that I finished recently was called Family of Liars by E. Lockhart. And I'll put the names of these down below. This was a sequel, it was a prequel actually to a book. This was like, um, oh, the prequel of this book is called We Were Liars, which, oh no, this is a prequel. Family of Liars is a prequel to We Were Liars, which means We Were Liars was written first. And I listened to that audio book, audio book, and my daughter also loved that book. She read the book. And I think my son might have read it too. We loved that book. It was a really great mystery and very good um, kind of surprise at the end. It was a great mystery. This book, Family of Liars, was written afterwards, but it takes place before it. So don't read this one first because it does spoil the the first book, We Were Liars. We Were Liars, A Family of Liars is, my daughter and I both didn't like it as much as We Were Liars. So I would really recommend We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Family of Liars was still very engaging. And if you loved We Were Liars, like I kind of loved it. It was still fun to, to listen to that audiobook, but um, I wasn't crazy about the reader actually. I did think the reader sounded, uh, something about her voice wasn't, it just put me off a tiny bit. So that's two audio, those are two audiobooks that I recommend or wanted to speak about anyway. Cassandra Speaks, the first one, definitely is so good. And uh, Family of Liars is okay, but the first one, We Were Liars, is excellent by E. Lockhart. And then, oh, I was going to just say, I've been watching um, Daisy Jones. My daughter and I have been watching it. She's been home on break, and it's been so nice and so much fun having her home. Um, she actually went, she has a two two week break for spring um, from Hamilton. And the first week she actually went to Scotland. Uh, we have a really good friend who is in school there in college in Glasgow. And so she went out there with another friend to spend the first week of spring break out there, kind of going around with him and like being, you know, taken around by a local guy. He's not actually from Glasgow, but he knows it well now since he's in school there. So that was super fun. And um, then the second week she's been home and we've just been having so much fun because it's hard having both. For me, it's been hard having both of my kids out of the house now and having it be kind of an empty nest, which I don't like that word, but it really does actually kind of capture the feeling you have as a mom um, and a dad. We both sort of feel like, wow, where are the kids? Like, it's just kind of quiet around here. So this has been so nice having her home for spring break. Um, and every vacation has been so nice when they're home, but this has been really nice having her home for this week. And she is actually, she spent the night last night in New York with a friend. So she's coming back today. So I haven't had as much time to actually knit this week um, because she's just been lying on me. And like, we've just been cozy watching shows, like shows or whatever it is. It's just really, really nice to have her home. And so we've been watching Daisy Jones, which has been Daisy Jones and the Six, which is totally such a fun show to watch with her. And she loves it. And um, we've been really enjoying the music. That's I highly recommend that show. It's actually weird because that show is like it's like my parents. It's totally my parents. My parents were both musicians, are both musicians still. 
but they grew up in exactly the same time as that show takes place that they were the same age and they had bands and they went you know met all the fam lots and lots of famous bands and so it's weird it's like the baby in that show is like me I actually really enjoy it too i'm loving the clothes they're all the clothes my mom used to wear and um it's really a fun show very nostalgic for me in a way to to see that and to think of I don't know the times are so different and it's really fun for my daughter too because she's like sort of can't believe how cool um her grandparents were <laughs> in a way although I mean she knows they're cool but it's like it's just fun to to kind of imagine that life really it's a very realistic kind of my parents probably didn't have the same dramas that they all have in the show but I'm sure there were different dramas you know so anyway that's been fun. All right. I think I'm going to wrap it up. I really didn't mean to have this be so long, but um, I'll probably edit some of it anyway. So thank you so much for joining me again, and I will see you next time. So take care and have a good week.